dear mom and mom's friend Keith. At first, I was kind of bummed that you weren't going to send me to the real space adventure camp. But the one Keith found in the back of his old car magazine has been great! I was all kinds of scared when you dropped me off at the strip mall parking lot. But after our kid Space leader revealed himself in an awesome display of science and space excitement, I calmed down a bit and started to enjoy the thrills of the journey. His name's Zip Zapson, and he's wonderful. Getting to Astro Training Base Station was the easiest part thanks to Admiral Zapson's Space Shuttle Warp Jumper. Away we went to shake hands with Milky Ways and Cosmo Dust. Whew, dang. I didn't know there was so much getting ready to do before I could actually travel into space. The first day, Mayor Zapson prepared my body for the rigors of the cold, dark coffin we call the universe. Next, we adapted my lungs to handle all kind of lunar germs and alien breath. Ugh. Weightlessness and agility training were tiring, but a lot of fun. Coach Zapson says, on the moon we weigh one sixteenth of what we weigh on Earth. That means you wouldn't have to sneak extra pudding cups after dinner, Ma. You can eat as many as you want! An astronaut needs more than just physical prowess to make the space grade. He also needs mental toughness. Strategy, cunning, and even diplomacy can sometimes be your best weapon when dealing with interstellar strangos. <laughs> with my training complete, we headed out to the blast zone for a big launch. I was so excited, I almost ralphed. But I didn't. Must be my training. Zip told me that even at ultralight speed, the journey would still take hours. But he let me in on an ancient astronaut secret. And prepared a special hibernation cocktail so the journey would only feel like minutes. I could feel it take effect almost immediately. It was time. I quickly climbed into the cockpit, with Comrade Zapton wishing me a Patriot's farewell. I was scared, confused, hungry, sweaty, sleepy. I felt everything I've ever felt before, and some new stuff too. With the control panels flashing lights and the rocket shaking as my lunar lullaby, I drifted away to the way out. ship's thrusters were silent. How long had it been since I entered Astronap? Wait a minute. The answer will come to me. Had I grown a beard? I had not. It was time for me to exit my steel home and greet the new world I would call Brian's Ma. Cool! I don't know if it was space madness or the Cosmo Bends, but this new planet? It looked a lot like our own. Something was off, though. I surveyed my new surroundings and noticed something moving in the distance. <gasps> it was an alien! I moved closer for recognizance. The creature moved and gyrated in a sickening dance. I was recording my observation when the beast noticed me. Its face! What kind of madness was this? It had taken the form of my old mentor, Baron Zapson. Must be some sort of lunar camouflage. He probed my brain and disguised himself as someone I trusted. Clever girl. Still in shock, the creature took to its hinds and leapt at me. My training kicked in and I moved without thinking. I attacked back. The beast begged and pleaded for me to abandon my defense. More tricks, I shouted! And with one final blow, I laid him to rest. High on adrenaline, I fell backwards and pulled myself together. Sleep now, my first galactic foe. You know who would love this? Zip! I'll bring him proof of my conquest. A trophy I shall take. This pelt should do. Since that first encounter, Mars has been pretty quiet, but I mustn't let my guard down. 
She's a wicked siren that waits for my weakness. So I stay alert, awaiting my next transmission from Postmaster Zapson. My ship may be out of fuel, but my spirit is not. So until my next letter, this is Cadet Brian saying, I'll be bop boop, bop boop. That's marching for. I love you, Mom. Mom, Mom, Mom.